Hey, what's going on? Uh, my name is Ryan. I'm a web developer, and uh, you are watching day one of Advent of Code 2022. Um, I'm making a, just a video series going through some Advent of Code problems. If you don't know what that is, Advent of Code is basically every December, uh, there's like a bunch of little coding challenges. Uh, last year, I made some YouTube videos uh, that did this in a language called Elm, and I wanted to continue that again this year. I got a lot of great feedback in like the, the Elm Slack and people saying this was a fun way to like learn um, kind of how I break down problems and functional programming. So if you're a web developer, if you're new to functional programming, if you're new to Elm, uh, this video is for you. Um, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be going through these advent of code problems that you see here. And then um, you don't have to install anything, do anything weird on your computer. Um, there's this thing called Ellie that we'll be using, which is basically just code pen for Elm. And I'm just gonna be kind of talking through an unedited version of how I'm gonna break down each of these problems. Um, so every video is gonna start the same. We're gonna go to advent of code. We're gonna see what the new problem is. I don't know what it is yet. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of solve it together over here. This is just a little bit of code that I wrote to kind of uh, show the interactive environment. We'll dive into this some more later, uh, but this is just a little Ellie setup. Um, and I made sure to make the background black so that you're not getting like a crazy uh, eye straining um, uh, white background. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, hopefully you learned something new and you have fun and I'm just gonna dive into it and I cannot wait to figure out what uh, what this year's puzzles are gonna be about. Um, so let's go, uh, let's go check out the first one. So I'm at adventofcode.com. You can go here yourself and you can follow along. Um, and I just logged in with my GitHub account. Um, uh, yeah, so let's dive into this and figure out um, what kind of code challenge we're gonna solve today. All right, day one calorie counting. Santa's reindeer typically eat regular reindeer food, but they need a lot of magical energy to deliver presents on Christmas. Uh, for that, their favorite snack is a special type of star fruit that only grows deep in the jungle. The elves have brought you on their annual expedition to the grove where the fruits grow. There's always like some crazy backstory to these things. Uh, to supply enough magical energy, the expedition needs to retrieve a minimum of 50 stars by December 25th. Although the elves assure you that, they're, uh, that the grove has plenty of fruit, you decide to grab any fruit you see along the way, just in case. Uh, collect stars by solving puzzles. Two puzzles will be made available on each day in the advent calendar. The second puzzle is unlocked when you complete the first, and each puzzle grants one star. Good luck. Uh, the jungle must be too overgrown and difficult to navigate in vehicles or uh, access from the air. The elves' expedition traditionally goes on foot. As your boats approach land, the elves begin taking inventory of their supplies. One important consideration is food, in particular the number of calories each elf is carrying, which is going to be our puzzle input. Uh, the elves take turns writing down the number of calories contained by the various meals, snacks, rations, etc., and they've brought, uh, they've brought with them one item per line. Each elf separates their own inventory from the previous elf's inventory by a blank line. For example, suppose the elves finish writing their item's calories and end up with the following list. So we've got one through three, and we got another four, five, six. Okay, this is just some sample input. This list represents the calories of the food carried by five elves, because we've got these five sections. So one, two, oops, three, four, five. All right, first elf is carrying uh, one, two, and three, so a total of 6,000. All right, the second elf is 4,000, five and six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, sweet. Um, in case the elves get hungry and need extra snacks, they need to know which elf to ask. They'd like to know how many calories are being carried by the elf carrying the most calories. In the example above, this is 24,000. So it's 24,000 because this elf here had the biggest, the biggest sum. So uh, part one is just find the elf carrying the most calories. How many total calories is that elf carrying? So um, what we're gonna, we always have like an example input in these puzzles, at least this is how it was last year. Um, so we can use this as our sample input to solve the problem, and then we're gonna get our own puzzle input. So the puzzle input that I get here is gonna be different than yours if you create an account. Um, so if you sign in with like, you know, GitHub or Google or however you do it, um, you're gonna have a different final answer, uh, but hopefully the, the code will work the same for you. Um, and of course, uh, everything I do, all these Ellie things, I'm gonna be sharing them as links, and then I'm gonna have them in the description of this video. So you can just click on them, try it yourself, kind of um, see if that uh, helps you kind of understand uh, what we did. So you'll have access to all the source code for this. 
Okay, so I'm gonna get started um, and I'm gonna show you how I use Ellie um, to like solve these problems. So in Elm, um, everything uh, that we're gonna do is going to render to some HTML. So I, I kind of have some placeholder stuff here. I'm just gonna clear it out um, and we can really just kind of start from scratch. So let's just, let's pretend this is like a blank Elm file just for video one to kind of go through what we need to do. So every, um, uh, every Elm program has a main module. That's kind of like the entry point to it. Um, and then it has these packages you can import. So you'll see that we have these three packages available by default. Uh, don't worry about packages too much. Um, HTML is a package that allows you to render uh, stuff uh, in the browser. So if I wanted to say like, hello, you, um, I would call the HTML text function and I would pass it this string value and it would turn that string value into a message that I could see in my browser. So this is rendering HTML. Uh, you can do all kinds of stuff. Uh, this isn't like a how to make Elm HTML tutorial, um, but there's all kinds of HTML tags that you might want to use. So for example, this here um, would render like an H1 tag. So all we're doing uh, in Ellie is we're just rendering some HTML and we're using that HTML to be able to see that the answers to our problems. So uh, what I had set up in that little template, uh, you might've noticed I was using some weird syntax that might be unfamiliar. So uh, main is a function. We expect main to return some HTML and HTML is a type that's available here. So this is all, this is all the same way of saying what we said before. Um, but what I, what I wanted to do was I wanted to, um, uh, if I try to like, you know, print out like a number, for example, here, uh, Elm's gonna give me an error and Elm's gonna say that uh, HTML text is expecting a string, so something with quotes around it, but I'm giving it a number. So I can't uh, just give it any like arbitrary stuff. Like I can't give it a list or uh, a Boolean. And so all my little uh, template set up was uh, the ability to um, convert anything into a string by using this debug to string function. So now all of a sudden uh, everything's working here and I can print out numbers. I can print out lists so I can have things like that. Uh, oops, I should probably, uh, uh, you know, close my list there. Uh, these are, uh, by the way, what you're seeing on the right, these are Elm compiler messages. They're gonna help us out as we try to solve this puzzle because I make typos all the time. Um, and so we're gonna get some hopefully very easy to follow uh, error messages. Um, cool. So as you can see here, there's like parentheses around things. Um, in Elm, uh, instead of wrapping everything in parentheses, uh, another way to write this, I'm gonna kind of comment this out. Another way to write this would be if I take the arguments and I use this pipeline syntax to kind of pipe the output of, uh, of one thing to another. So what you're gonna see here is that this has the same result. Basically what I'm saying is take uh, one, two, three and pass it into debug to string and then take all of that and then pass that into HTML text. Uh, we're gonna be using pipelines a lot because it allows us to kind of break down our ideas into like little steps that we can read uh, top to bottom, left to right. Um, which makes it a little bit easier to follow. So anyway, that was a very long-winded way uh, for me to introduce uh, the first step that we're gonna do, which is we are just gonna print out the puzzle input. That's all we're gonna do. And we're gonna kind of walk through how we can get closer to the answer. Uh, so the answer for this one is 24,000. We're gonna make a little program that helps us find which elf has the most food. Um, so the way I like to start that is I start with this puzzle input and I'm gonna use a multi-line string and kind of paste the input here. So what you'll see is I've got some extra spaces I'm intentionally gonna put in here. And all we're gonna do is we're just gonna print out puzzle input directly uh, to the right side of the screen. So you're gonna see all these new lines here. Uh, this is like the actual text that I have. Um, so what I wanna do is I'm gonna want to kind of transform this input into something I can work with. So if I do string.trim, uh, string.trim is a built-in function that's gonna get rid of all the um, initial uh, white space here, and it's also gonna get rid of all like the trailing white space here. So when I compile this, you'll see that um, those initial new lines are gone, and uh, now I'm left with just like numbers at the end. So um, that works. There's also another function. So after we trim the string, we can call uh, string.lines, and that's gonna split things in the lines here. So as you'll see, um, each line is just gonna be an item 
in our um, in our list. So we have each line 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. This is now a list of strings that we have. So 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Um, so what we need to do is we need to kind of um, take this data structure and for each elf, we're gonna need to store, um, uh, basically group these uh, lists of numbers uh, in a way where we can kind of see who's, which elf uh, has which sets of like food or which sets of calories. It's kind of a bizarre, bizarre puzzle. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make, we're gonna make our first function together. So um, a function can take in an input, return an output. So after we have a list of strings, we're gonna have a function that says um, to elf uh, calorie thingy. We'll worry about the name later. <laughs> so this is our puzzle input. Um, underneath all this, I'm just going to make a, a to elf calorie thing, which takes our list of strings. And we're just gonna return the list of strings as is. So we're not gonna mess with the list. When we compile this, nothing should change. Uh, but what we wanna do is we're gonna want to uh, start uh, going through the list and then grouping uh, these things based on which elf has uh, what. So I think at the end, um, it would be nice if we just had like a list of lists. So um, like the first list would be 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. The second list would be 4,000. And we can get rid of these weird like empty strings in between. So let's um, let's try to do that. So I'm gonna use um, a list dot fold function. So this fold function is gonna go from left to right. And this is gonna be a little helper function that we make. Uh, we're gonna say what we have our, uh, the initial value of this like, this like little loop that we're making is, and then we're gonna have the input, which is uh, that list of strings. Um, you'll also see me do something. Um, Elm has a built-in formatter here. So when I hit this format button, you'll see everything will be like aligned automatically for me and it'll get rid of like trailing white space and stuff. So I'm gonna just add a few of these just so that we can keep some um, keep some white space in the bottom so I'm not bumping my scroll bar up against the, <laughs> the bottom of the screen the whole time. Um, and so if I, if I compile this program, uh, it's gonna be complaining because I don't have this helper function defined. It doesn't know what that is. So what helper is gonna do is it's going to take uh, one at a time, it's going to take in each line that we have here. So it's gonna take a string, and then we're gonna have a list. Uh, hmm. What we kind of want to have at the end is a list of list of strings. So that's what we're we're trying to build up. Um, what's a little bit tricky is this is gonna be this is gonna be a hard thing to uh, since each line one at a time is our list of lists. And we want to uh, kind of append to this each time we loop through. So right now we're not doing anything. So our list is, is staying empty. Um, but basically, the, uh, if our string is empty, then it's time to like uh, make another list. Um, so this will be, let's this is gonna be uh, create a new list. Uh, I think that'll be something with a line, and then we'll have our list of lists. And then what we wanna do is basically add a list to the end of it. So if our line is empty, that means we're ready to, to start a new line. Else, um, what we're gonna do is, um, hmm. I think the easiest way to do this is probably split on this. Okay, so let's back up a little bit. Um, and let's go back to what we had here. So I'm just gonna comment this out so we can see where our input was before we started running all this, all this code here. So I'm gonna just do list of lists. going to do this to make the compiler happy and let's let's take a look at where, where we're starting um so initially when we call this uh helper um it's like add line to elf thing helper is kind of a, a bad name so let's rename that so uh each time we call 
add line to elf thing. Uh, we're going to take a line, we're going to take the existing list of lists, and we're going to return a new list of lists. Um, so a big thing in Elm you'll see is just functions that only take in inputs and return outputs. So if this, when this code is done, uh, we should have a list of strings that comes in, and then we're going to return a list of list of strings, which comes out. So we're going to kind of group the lists by elf. So you, you'll see this happens in the puzzle. This would be like the first list. This would be in the second list. This would be the third list the fourth, and then the fifth list. Um, and so that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to take that step where we're taking these and grouping them together. Um, so for part one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just uh, start by kind of looking at the data we have and, and thinking through that. So initially our list is empty. So what we're gonna wanna do is every time our list is empty, we're just gonna wanna create um, a new item in the front and we're going to uh, just return that. That's all we're gonna do. So if we don't have an existing list, that's fine. Um, if not, we might have a first list and then like the other lists. So this is a way uh, to get like, uh, if you have a, a list of numbers in Elm, like one, two, three, what this is gonna do, if this is the list that comes in, is that, sorry, the first item, then the other items what this is doing is this is saying okay the first item is going to be one and then the other items are going to be two and three so um, this little colon is saying like take the first uh, the first thing out of the list so in the case where it's empty we don't have a uh, first thing so we can't there's nothing to take off uh, but in the case that we have items like this uh, we should be able to pull off the first item so because we're dealing with a list of lists of strings, um, the first item that we have is actually gonna be a first list of items because it'll just be one of these. Um, and then this will be the other, the other list. It's already, it's already kind of a very confusing start, um, but we can, uh, we'll, we'll get through it. So uh, if uh, the string is empty, that comes in. So right now we're saying, is a thousand an empty string? It's not. Um, so we'll worry about that later. But if it's a thousand, a thousand is an empty string, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the first list, we are gonna push this new line onto it. And then um, what we wanna do is we're gonna wanna put this right back in front of the other list. So just like this separated, uh, the uh, they call this the tail and they call this the head. and like the, fancy thing, but this is just the first item and these are the remaining items. Um, uh, we're gonna just kind of put this at the end here. So um, what we're gonna try to do is if it's a number, we're just gonna add it to the, the first list that we're, that we're kind of building on. And then we're gonna keep doing that until we get to an empty string. And as soon as we get to an empty string, what we're gonna do is we are going to make a new list again, like this. We are going to put that uh, basically we're going to put that right back into like the basically in front of the initial list that comes in. So I think if we compile this, oh, it's going to be upset because I have this floating in the middle of nowhere. Okie dokie. So we've got a list of lists. We got a line. This list does that. That's cool. The list of lists. This is a list of list of strings, and we are appending it to the front of a list of lists. Oh, you know what? We don't want to. Uh, we want to skip the. We don't want to put an empty list here. We want an empty. We don't want to put a blank string in our list. Right, let's take a look at what's going on. So this is saying this is a list of list of lists. <laughs> I think I, I went too far. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to... Oh, you know what? It's because I used the wrong symbol there. Okay, so all that being said, all we need to do is now run this. And I'm going to use um, fold R so it'll work right to left in the list. Otherwise, our list is going to be backwards. Let me just show you the list being backwards. So you'll see that um, this is L5. 
this is elf four, this is elf three, this is elf two, and this is elf one. Uh, if we do uh, R, it's going to it's going to do it in the right direction here. Um, at least I, th I thought it would. Uh, <laughs> But um, what we can also do is we can do fold L and then we can just reverse this final list. Um, that's that. So uh, this, all that work was just us taking each of these uh, groups and just turning it into strings. So, um, so now that we have this elf calorie uh, nested list, that's what I'll call it. Now that we have this, um, I'm gonna just add some little comments here to show you what the types of values are that we have here. So our puzzle input was a string. When we called string.trim, uh, that still returned a string, so it just made a shorter one. When we called string.lines, that gave us a list of strings. And then once we pass the list of strings in a two elf calorie nested list, it's going to give us one of these back. So now that we're on this step, we have a list of list of strings. And that's what we're seeing here. We see this list. Uh, of lists, right? Um, and then we're just turning that back. This function turns it back into a string for us so we can print it out. And then this turns it into HTML so that Elf can render it uh, on this pane on the right for us. Um, so now that we have this, what we need to do is we need to um, turn these into numbers, right? So uh, list of list of numbers, <laughs> let's call it, let's just call it that. And so um, we need to take this and just loop through all these and basically get rid of the quotes on the outside of these. If there's any numbers, if there's any values in here that aren't valid, uh, we can just get rid of them. So we could we could have done that uh, here if we wanted. So we don't have to do it here. We can um, do it in this step, but we're gonna need to change some things. So I'm gonna hit the compile button and let Elm walk me through what needs to change. Um, so uh, if I say this is gonna be an int, then it's going to be upset here because uh, this told it it was dealing with a list of strings, but it looks like that's not true anymore. Cool. And then over here, um, it's saying that this uh, line here uh, is a string and not a list of ints. So what I need to do is I need to, um, so I need to say in the case where the line, so string dot to int is an int. So if it's actually like a thousand or two thousand, uh, then I'm going to put it in my list. If not, I don't want to, I don't want to add anything. So this is invalid. We're just going to leave it alone. So we're just going to do this. Um, so this case is kind of weird, but uh, we basically, we don't want to deal with the, the case where um, we have this. So it's, it's one option that we can embed this in here. I'm going to, um, back out of this because this is already kind of a hard function to follow and I don't want to add any extra logic to it. I want to keep this one simple. And what I want to do is instead, I want to make a function that just turns a list of strings into a list of ints because I think that's going to be easier uh, for, for everyone to read back home. To list of list of ints. So this is going to take a list of list of strings and then the variable names are gonna be intentionally annoying just so that it's easy to follow what's going on. So if we have a list of list of strings, we can have uh, this list map function and we can make another function called to list of ints. And we'll give it a list of list of strings. And each time we call list.map, we're basically uh, making these uh, unwrap one more, one more level. So we have this. So now we end up with a list of strings and what we're going to do is we're going to call a filter map. Filter map is going to be just like map, but it's going to discard any results that didn't work. So when we do string.toInt, uh, the string.toInt function, these are the Elm package docs, uh, the toInt function might work and it might not work. So here's some examples from the docs. If you call toInt on 123, it's going to work. And it's going to say, yep, I got just 123. But if you do something that's not valid, uh, like maybe you type AB, um, that's going to give you back like nothing because that's not a that's not a valid integer. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use filter map 
uh, which discards values. So I think if you look at the docs, if you look at the docs here uh, for filter map, you'll see that the example is actually using two. So this is discarding all values that aren't valid integers. So three sticks around and 12 sticks around. Um, but high is not a number, fourth is not a number, may is not a number. So all those get filtered out for us. Um, so we shouldn't see any of these numbers get filtered because they're all valid. Uh, but in the case that, you know, someone gave us garbage input, like you know, they type banana here, for example, that's going to get filtered out and not included in our math later on. So um, I'm just going to try to protect us from the problems like that. Um, so I'm going to do that. And then I am going to just pipe this here. So earlier I was saying that we wanted this. Um, and now we have it. So now we have all these numbers. And then uh, it gets a little bit easier now. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we are going to call list.sum on each, each list that we have. So what this is going to do is the part where it adds up each list. So this will become 6,000. This will become 4,000. This will become 11,000. List.map is saying for each item in the list, I want you to run this function, list.sum. And so if you're ever curious about a function, you can always click on this docs thing. You can search for it here. And you can see a nice example. Every function that Elm provides always has uh, official documentation that you can find uh, over here, packageelmlang.org. I'm going to uh, copy this and make sure to include it in the description. So there's going to be a little helpful link section uh, included with this video, and that's going to show you, um, that's going to have a link to this, this package um, uh, site so that you can, you can use this yourself at home. Okay. So what this is going to do is this is going to turn uh, a list of numbers into a single number. So if we ran it on one, two, three, we'd get six. If we run it on 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, we'll get 6,000. So now we're getting a little bit closer to the problem uh, that, that we need to solve, right? So now we're actually dealing with these full sums. And what you'll notice is that we've got our 24,000. Um, and this is what the answer to the puzzle is, because this is the biggest number in the list. Um, so what we can do is we can say list.maximum. And there's our answer. So uh, for this uh, example, this is going to give us a maybe int. So Elm uh, handles optional values with his maybe type, basically just to cover the case where you have an empty, an empty list and you say, what's the max number in my empty list? It would give us back nothing because uh, there's there's no numbers in the list. Uh, but maximum will work if there's ever an item in the list. So that's why you'll see this weird maybe here. Um, but yeah, so and you can, of course, learn about that uh, over here. I'm going to search for maximum. You'll see that empty list returns nothing and everything else will find a find a maximum for you. So that's what that just is doing there. So um, if I took 24,000 and I take a look at the answer, that's what I'm looking for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if this code works by um, getting my puzzle input. I'm just going to copy it here. Uh, I'm going to save this as is. And then um, there'll be a there'll be a link for you um, in the YouTube video below, you'll see a part one solution link. And that's not going to include my crazy long uh, puzzle input. You'll see this is 2,000 lines of code. Um, so you probably don't want that when you're trying to read the code. So I'm going to copy this and make sure that I keep that. Around. And let's see if we can get the answer right. So I'm going to compile. Looks like uh, 7613 is the answer for my data. Fingers crossed. Hey, that's the right answer. You're one gold star closer to collecting enough star fruit. OK, so our code worked. And it worked on this crazy big data set, uh, which is great news. Um, so I'm going to undo this, go back to the sample input. And now that we did part one, uh, Advent of Code is going to unlock us a part two, which is usually like a slightly more complicated version and tests how you solved the first one. So let's see what this one's about. Uh, by the time you calculate uh, the answer to the elf's questions, they've already realized that the elf carrying the most calories of food might eventually run out of snacks. To avoid this unacceptable situation, the elves would instead like to know the total calories carried by the top three elves carrying the most calories. That way, even if one of those elves run out of snacks, they will still have two backups. In the example above, the top three elves are the fourth elf, so the 24,000, 
then the third elf with the 11,000, and the fifth elf with the 10,000. And if you sum up all three of those, you get 45,000. So uh, this part of the puzzle is asking how many calories are those elves carrying in total? Um, so the great news is um, everything we did was step by step. So if there's ever a step we don't want to, like, for example, getting the answer, the maximum, if we ever want to just take off a step, we still have all the progress we made. So we can still work with this 11,000, this 24,000, and 10,000, and get those three maximum values, and then sum those up to get the answer. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say get three maximum values. Maximum values. And this will also return a list of ints. Uh, we can also have it return uh, something called a tuple, which is just like uh, a group of three numbers. So it'll always be that size. Let's try that out. Let's see how that goes. Um, I'm going to, uh, just for simplicity, I think I'm going to just do a list. Uh, but you could you could probably do this with a, with a triple of numbers too. So let's define one more function at the end, which takes a list of integers and gives us back the maximum of three values. So what we can do is we can say, um, uh, for this list, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say, uh, first maximum is going to be maybe an integer. And then uh, what we can do is we can, uh, well, what we can do is uh, we can either get each maximum one at a time, or we could sort the list and then just grab the first three items. Let's let's do that instead. That seems a lot easier. Um, so uh, I guess we can do it here. So we're gonna do the same pipeline strategy. So right now you should see the same answer over here. We're gonna call the built-in list.sort. And that's gonna sort uh, descending. So what we want is we want the first three, right? Uh, uh, so we're going to reverse this list. So now we've got 24,000, 11,000, 10,000. And then all we're going to do is say list.t3. And then we're left with the three. And all uh, we have to do at the end is once we have our three maximum values, we're going to call that list.sum one more time. And we're going to get 45,000, which is the answer to the puzzle. Um, so. Uh, all I have to do is use my existing puzzle input. So let me uh, do this day one, part two. So this is my answer for day one, part two. So I'm gonna save this, copy that link for the YouTube video. Um, so that'll be in the description below. And then all I'm gonna do is take our puzzle input from before, paste it in. Hit compile, and it looks like 205,805 is the answer. Uh, that sounds right only because it, we definitely know it should be greater than the, the 70,000 answer we had from before, right? Um, so it's at least that number. Let's see if this is right. Okay, we've got our first two gold stars. Um, so that's it. So um, we're not going to we're not going to share on uh, <laughs> Twitter or Mastodon, but we are going to return the advent calendar. Um, and then in 20 hours uh, from the time this video is recorded, uh, the second, the day two puzzle will be available. Um, so yeah, so uh, that was kind of a, a crazy introduction <laughs> to Elm. We did a lot of list map stuff, um, but let's just kind of go over the things that um, uh, were kind of useful to know in this puzzle. Um, so the first thing was uh, obviously, how do I turn a string into a list of numbers? So something that helps is commenting these out and just remembering the kind of the pieces, the incremental steps we had to take. So uh, we learned about uh, using string.trim to get rid of the um, excessive like new lines in the beginning and the end of the string. So now that's gone. We learned about uh, string lines. So string lines uh, takes all of these numbers. This is just one massive string separated by the special new line character. String.lines is gonna break it up into a list of strings so that we can loop over it and we can uh, kind of start to group things. I think the hardest part by far was this two elf calorie nested list. 
uh, because we had to start talking with like crazy English where we were saying there's a list of lists of strings and I think that was the hardest part for me <laughs> recording the video is trying not to confuse people. Um, but we used uh, something called list.foldl which allows us to kind of go through one item at a time and we just kept appending to the front of the list. Um, and because we appended to the front of the list at the very end we needed to run reverse. Um, there's other ways to write this that might have been less confusing. So rather than doing colon colon and list that reverse, something I could have done, maybe I should have done, uh, was uh, you know appending to the end. But the challenge that I ran into was trying to get that first item and and the, and the tail. So um, list that fold L. Uh, you can take a look at the docs for that. Um, and it's it's the same in JavaScript if you use to reduce. It's the same exact idea. And so you can um, kind of like uh, do any any kind of thing uh, with that. Um, cool. So that was just to kind of start to group the items by elf. So now we have each individual list represents one elf. Um, oops, sorry, I skipped a step there. So that was that. Uh, each individual list is just a single elf, which is what the problem wanted us to think about. And then uh, we need to turn those into numbers so we can do math on them. We can't uh, add up strings uh, in Elm. Um, so now that these are numbers, uh, we can use list.map so that each of these we sum up. So we're going to sum up each of these individual lists. That gives us these values. Um, and then using uh, the get three maximum values function, uh, what we're able to do is sort the list. Uh, the sort gave us uh, smallest to biggest, so we reversed it. And then we took the first three, and then those were our three maximum values. Once we had that, uh, we were able to call list.sum. And list.sum uh, returns us an integer at the end. Um, so that's it. That was day one of admin code. Um, I hope uh, hope this wasn't too crazy. Uh, hopefully tomorrow will involve less list mapping and, and list fold. I think day one list fold is a little bit intense. Uh, but if you followed me this far, hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Um, and uh, let me know in the comments if there's anything uh, that I can do to make uh, things a little clearer, easier to follow. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you next time. Happy December.